speaking to Patrice Colors, who is the founder or one of the founders of uh, Black Lives Matters. Who's Black Lives Matter? She's going to tell us that in a few minutes or in a few seconds. But I can tell you that single-handedly, Black Lives Matter came into Netroots Nation 2015, and they singularly changed the direction, or to put it bluntly, the narrative within the Democratic Party as far as how the different stump speech would go, go forth in one day. Like, likewise, they were responsible for putting Netroots Nation on the map for folks that had never heard of Netroots Nation before. So without further ado, Patrice Collars, how do you do, my friend? Good. Thanks for having me. Well, look, uh, we, 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 wanted, you, we want to, wanted to get you on live. We couldn't, but we take what we can get. Let me first go uh, at it this, this way. Please give me a, a short synopsis of the genesis of Black Lives Matter. Um, Black Lives Matter was created in 2013 after the acquittal of George Zimmerman. My good friend Alicia Garza uh, wrote a love note to Black people and she signed off by saying Black Lives Matter. Under the love note um, and on a Facebook thread, I hashtagged Black Lives Matter. And then uh, within the day, Alicia and I were um, talking about creating it as a political project, as an organizing project. And then our um, Opal Tometi, who is the third co-founder, came on to help build out the infrastructure, the communications infrastructure and the platforms so that it could go viral. Um, so that's how we started Black Lives Matter. Well, that's pretty interesting. Now, I, I want to jump to Netroots Nation 2015 rather quickly because that is what made the headlines. And you know it made the headlines because of the name of your group. So first tell me, uh, what was the uh, real reason that you guys decided to quote unquote disrupt Netroots Nation specifically when the, uh, the Democratic candidates, uh, candidates that pretty much share many of our values were on stage? We decided to stage an action during the presidential forum for two reasons. One, we wanted to um, actually uplift Sandra Bland the young black woman who was killed, uh, what we what we believe in the movement and her family believes that she was killed inside the Waller County Jail. We wanted to make sure that we held an action because no one had really brought up her name and that route. And then two, we wanted to stage an intervention in the progressive movement that's largely sort of led um, by white folks around uh, the conversation of having a new racial justice agenda and that the, Democrat, the Democratic Party actually needs to fight for the black vote if it's going to get our votes. And uh, there, there must be um, a, a clear frame around uh, a, a, an agenda that's built by and for the people. Well, I tell you one thing. Uh, you guys kept that under wraps pretty well. The night before, I got word that something was going to happen. But it, you guys are so well. I, I don't know how you held it in, uh, Patrice. I really don't know. Because one, one of the leaders in your group came to me <laughs> and he said, Egberto, something is going down. Be here at 10. I said I had a panel at 10. He said, be here at 10. I couldn't make it at 10, but uh, somebody else came during the session and slapped me and said, you better have our backs. And I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> but, but, any, but, <laughs> but anyhow, let me, let, let, I want to ask you a little bit more about that, that meeting because um, as an activist, we want results, okay? And what I can say categorically is because of what you did, you actually got results. Bernie Sanders' platform changed. I mean, I went to see Bernie Sanders here in Houston. The platform was quite different than, it, than what he gave in Madison, than what he gave in Iowa or any other places. So in that regard, you were successful. Now, yeah. uh, so that, that's an absolute statement. You were successful. I think you also were successful in doing something that is very important, and I hope the progressive movement realizes it. Within that room, there was a lot of people that expressed, people that should know better, express 
some negative feelings on what you guys did. Before I go into that any further, had you heard that? Oh, yes. We were getting very negative feedback um, from people inside the conference on Twitter in particular. Mm -hmm. Now, when I, when I, the reason I ask it in that fashion is because now I'm going to, let me give a a short narrative here. Okay. Uh, As, as a liberal, and I prefer the word liberal to progressives because you know, that is the real word. We allowed it to be vilified by the right, but as liberals, um, I really believe that um, it is us who have been doing, you know, good things for women, good things for transgenders, the gay movement, the black movement, the Chicano movement, the Latino movement, all these different movements. We know that as fact. But the response of many of the people, specifically many of what I call the black intelligentsia, as well as many white people in the room, simply disappointed me. And it disappointed me for one reason only. And that is, we all understand what activism is all about, and we all understand that unless you push the envelope, you do not get results. And and that is one of the reasons I wanted you, first of all, on the program. And secondly, every time I do the program, there's something called the blog of the week that's read, and it was going to be this in detail that was going to be covered, a disappointment in the response of the progressive, or I'm sorry, the liberal movement to the action that you guys that you guys actually took. Do you concur? Yes, of course. I completely agree with that. Um, we are we weren't just talking to the candidates, we we're talking to the larger progressive movement that has large in part not just um, minimized the idea of uh, black folks and there being a state of emergency, but oftentimes ignored. Absolutely. Oftentimes ignored is, I think, is a is a is an understatement. Mostly ignored until we need your vote or until we need something or some action from you. That is generally how yep. it goes. Now, uh, ESPN, Stephen Smith. I don't know if you know who that character is on ESPN. Have you ever heard I of the guy? Yes. Okay. Yes, and I saw his tweet. <laughs> now, elaborate, please. He basically said that Black Lives Matter um, essentially seems to only matter uh, when it comes to white people. Uh, Black Lives Matter should matter when black people are killing black people, too. Right. And your thoughts on on that statement and how he relates to what you guys have actually done? I think it's a tired statement, to be honest with you. I Mm -hmm. think it's a lazy statement. I think that the call for Black Lives Matter is a call for um, the value of black life across the board. And to say that black people aren't dealing with black um, black crime is just a lie. And to not actually talk about the conditions that create harm in our communities and create violent communities is also um, insufficient. It's politically insufficient. And so when Stephen Smith, who has a huge um, following, tweets something like that, it's really dangerous and it's really unfortunate. Um, I, I, I think you, you raise an important point. Uh, with with a platform comes responsibility. Uh, as personally as my platform grew, I ensured that that responsibility came along with it. I assume that you've done the same thing as I've gone through your your Black Lives Matter website, as I've gone through your you know all, all the ac- different actions that you've taken. Uh, it is important that you structure yourself because you know at that point you're suddenly becoming sort of an icon that folks are going to be looking at. Now I have. One minor issue that I want to address with uh, what what occurred at Netroot Nations uh, uh, 2015. Again, I was right there in the midst of it and trying to document as best as possible and talking to some of the leaders who, you know, some of them are friends of mine here in Houston. And I I made a comment to him. And this is what I told him because um, he couldn't tell me the action in as much as he trusted me and we knew each other very well. And I told him that uh, when actions like these are taken, a narrative should always be ready. And what I told him is what I had wished is that going forward, when actions of this magnitude is, is, is 
you know, concern because, I mean, we all know when you guys are in the streets, let's say in Ferguson or now in Florida with the, in Alabama with the new young lady that's, I don't know if you found, you heard about the new lady that's found, that's been hung as well in, in Alabama. Just. Yeah. Kendra Chapman. Exactly. Uh, you know, when you're out there, there's a certain dynamics that occur in the street and there's a certain dynamic that occurs in conferences like Netroots Nation. I would hope that better alliances in the future would be made with, let's say, bloggers and activists like myself and others of trust so that we would be on the ready to, create, to, to put out the correct narrative as opposed to what was actually placed on, let's say, CNN and some of the other networks. So that, that, that was just yeah. one concern of mine. My second concern was, um, did you think a little bit uh, there, there was a time that uh, maybe control was lost a bit in in the session. That's a question. Do I feel like the yeah, yeah. your con one your one. control your control? Mm, I don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. I think I think we made the impact we wanted to make, mm -hmm. and I think. Right afterwards, we did lots of media, and so um, Jamil Smith from New Republic did an article, um, lots of different bloggers did articles, and I actually think, uh, you know, mainstream media has a particular role they play, which is really um, their job is to, to make a spectacle. Uh, but I think there's been other bloggers and folks who have come pretty correct mm -hmm. and uh, have a sort of clarity on what this is about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the reason I asked that, okay, is that that is something that was out there with regards to when I say out there, you know, I mean, from the mainstream media that was out there that yeah. you lost control of what you wanted to do. Now, if you're telling me that, no, that is exactly what you wanted to do. There are times that you simply wanted to shut them down. You wanted to shut the speaker down. Then you were successful. <laughs> You're absolutely successful. Yeah, because honestly, the, the speakers the speakers weren't responding. Mm -hmm. They was not responding authentically. Right. Uh, he flippantly said, "Black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter." Right. That he was crazy. The yeah. Argument. Right. It was crazy, and Senator Sanders kept speaking into his speech. He didn't right. actually listen to us. And I'll be honest with you, uh, Patrice. At first, I was a bit concerned that well wait let him answer and after i started to hear the answer and after i spoke to a couple of the other activists it was like my god look at how i was about to myself an activist to fall into the group think you follow what i'm saying in, in into yeah. think into thinking that no no i understand what you're doing i'm not letting you move on until you answer the specific question exactly. I am asking you exactly. and it was easy yep. not to see that it was easy yep. exactly. not to see that so um, so like I said you guys did change uh, the narrative in the way he responded okay let's move forward on political strategy okay I think you have the uh, per you have the uh, the protest down perfectly to, to actually get your means where do we move on from here? I mean, there's a time and, you know, we were speaking to some other politicians and I'm talking about uh, not your, your average politicians, but the ones that are intended to be a, uh, an ally to these types of movements. Uh, what's going to be your interface? How do you intend to move forward to take this to the next step or the next level? Um, I think it's now time for us to create uh, people's agenda and mm -hmm. see if the candidates will speak into that agenda. Um, we will be at every debate. Uh, I think it's time for us to develop a questionnaire for the president, mm -hmm. presidential candidates. I think it's time. For, I think I'm curious. It would be great if our movement can host our own debate. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say that, are you talking about Democratic candidates only or all candidates? I think all candidates. I think that's a good thing. Now, I trust as well that you will be having actions, not only on in Democratic events, but uh, let's say Republican, Independent, oh, and, gr and Green okay. events, including okay. the Greens. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I have one last question before um, before you go in. It, it um, goes as follows. Um, when 
in 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 your in the new strategy that you're going to be taking on uh do you intend to start yourself running candidates under the banner we're not there yet but mm. it's it's something we think about but we're not there yet it's something you think about and the last question is as follows uh, and it, it bears from O'Malley and what a whole lot of people who would like to stymie the movement, because you, you have to be uh, frank by having a, a moniker of Black Lives Matter. What you actually do is leave yourself open for exactly what O'Malley did or the others with the all lives matter, white lives matter, or Latino lives matter and all that sort of thing. Why don't I mean, mm-hmm. first of all, I need to I, I need to be frank, the populace in general Men are mentally lazy. While I understand the concept and most people who want to understand the concept can, why don't you in simple terms that a five-year-old can understand, why is it that the reaction, that the reaction when O'Malley said all lives matter was met with disgust? Because when one says all lives matter, it actually means that they don't believe that black lives matter. Okay, let me let me let me. I want to elaborate on that a, a bit. Uh, I I I'm, I I consider myself a part of the movement, and I I think I may have said that a bit differently. I think it 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 more or less says that you don't believe that the country currently does not believe that Black Lives Matter. Because in in other words, I think they're simplifying uh, the issue by actually saying there's really not a problem. Every life matters. Of course, that's exactly. That's exactly what's happening. You're ex- and that, and I think that is, that is a part that it, I don't want to call it offensive, but I want to call it that is a naive part of the statement. Well, before oh, I right before I let you go, Patrice, is there anything you'd like to tell our audience here? We are here in in Houston, and not only in Houston, but because it is also on the internet, this is going to be heard all throughout the nation through the Coffee Party Network and several other networks. So why don't you give a message that you'd like? the entire country to hear. Uh, For folks who are fighting on the side of justice, remember that the Black Lives Matter movement is about the totality of black life. And I send my condolences to Sandra Bland's family and I give uh, just huge hugs to the people who decided to stand up for Sandra in Waller County. I know that a lot of people who've been traveling to Houston to the Waller County Jail uh, now is our time to fight for our lives. We're in a state of emergency. Patrice Colors, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter. It was a pleasure. It was my honor speaking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much.